Hello, and thank you for joining me today. It's Alan Barry Labucan from the rocksandstocksnews.com website. I'm very excited to have a good show today on the In the News. Before I get into some of the companies that I want to talk about, and I've got a very good list of companies to talk about today, I wanted to let you uh, talk a little bit about the price of gold. Um, for a long time now, I've been seeing the... Um, the uh, U.S. dollar printing going out of control, the U.S. debt going out of control, and um, a Federal Reserve that's painted into the corner and uh, unable to raise interest rates um, in order to fight inflation. And now we're seeing inflation kicking in quite dramatically. And uh, that had a very good effect on gold over the last few days, and especially today up around 30 some dollars. Um, it's really broken out of late since the last Fed meeting uh, when they talked about um, lowering some of their um, balance sheet. Um, I, I think they're gonna reverse course on that. They're a very major um, uh, buyer in that market and for them to come out of the market, uh, we'll have a, a dramatic push on the price of interest rates and I don't think they can afford to push interest rates. One of the main things that's driving um, uh, the, uh, um, the inflation right now is that uh, wage pressures are starting to go up. And uh, there's also a bottleneck on the supply chain for plenty of products. This is going to cause long term uh, inflation and a great hedge against inflation against the money printing, against the uh, um, debt issuance, against the grossly overvalued stock market, which is trading at huge multiples right now. Um, gold, silver, both of them are up dramatically today. So it's a good time to be looking at gold and uh, gold stocks. And we've got a bunch to talk about today. So let's get on it. I'm going to share my screen here. The first tech company I'm going to talk about is Sokeman Minerals. Sokeman Minerals is a sponsor of the website. They're good friends to the work that I do. Thank you. I want to thank them very much. And I also want to thank them very much for putting out excellent news today. Uh, it has driven their stock up 24.6% to on 983,000 shares. So that's almost five times usual uh, average daily volume. Uh, that's a very strong indicator. Now let's look a little bit at the uh, news. Um, hold on here, I'm gonna get to a different site. Uh, the news I wanna look at is, just give me a second. These things never cooperate with me when I want, but what they were doing is drilling off of a barge. And um, the, the, the reason that that's so important is that they have drilled a bunch of holes. Oh, here's the headline. Sokeman reports first barge-based drill results from their Moosehead project in central Newfoundland. Stock symbol is SIC. They own 100% of this. And their historical drilling or their past drilling has been from the shoreline over here, as you can see all these dots and all these lines. And what they were really trying to do was reach way over here to get into these faults. Now they've set up a barge here and they're able to drill from right at the barge. And that's resulted in uh, one of the drill holes hit 4.95 meters of almost an ounce per ton, starting at 41 meters, so right at surface. Another hit 4.2 meters of 14.72, uh, so right around a half an ounce per ton. Uh, nine meters of 6.65 grams per ton. Um, they say that the drilling confirms the shallow high-grade gold-bearing quartz veins, which are extensions of the eastern, upper eastern trend in the footwall splay mineralized zones. Uh, holes reported drilled uh, 10 meter to 15 meter, meter grid spacing. That's the thing with these high-grade systems orogenic systems. You need to get really tight spacing between your holes 
So you can understand the, uh, the plunge of the gold uh, bearing system and also the complex faulting. In these orogenic systems, uh, complex faulting is very good. And uh, that's what prepares the rocks so that these high grade fluids can make their way up. And uh, as I said earlier, 4.6 meters of 47 grams of gold in the foot wall splay. Then they kept extending that hole and they hit 8.1 meters of 68 grams. So some really nice looking drill results. Uh, and Tim Froud, who is the president and CEO of Sokeman says, and I quote, we are extremely pleased with the early results from the North Pond barge based drilling. We've been stressing the importance of this program for several months, and it's very rewarding to see our expectations met with these strong results. The barge program to date consists of 20 holes with mineralized veins encountered in the majority of the holes. Some holes tested both the upper eastern trend and the foot wall splay with the table above reporting both intersections. The barge program will continue as long as conditions allow. Winter conditions, mainly freezing, are expected in late November to mid-December, at which point the barge will be pulled from the pond and mothballed until the spring of 2022. We are pleased to announce that the current 50,000 meter program has been increased to 100,000 meters with drilling to continue with occasional breaks through 2020. We see growth potential in all areas of the known mineralized corridors, as well as discovery potential on our numerous regional targets, end quote. So it, it's no wonder that the stock um, popped up 20, well, let's say 25% today uh, on big volume. Uh, they still only have a $76 million valuation. In Newfoundland, companies that have success, one of them I'm gonna talk about later, they tend to have you know, 100, 200, 500 plus billion dollar uh, uh, valuation. So on a relative basis, finding these one of these orogenic systems with high grade in it, lots of money for drilling. Uh, this is a very modest valuation. The next company I'm gonna talk about is another sponsor of the website, and that is I-80 Gold. They had two releases out, one was they uh, announced a preliminary economic assessment. I'm not gonna go into the whole thing, but um, the company, this is from their Granite Creek project in Nevada. It's a preliminary economic assessment. They talk about an after-tax NPV with a 5% discount of US 244.9 million, an after-tax internal rate of return of 34.2 million, uh, 2%. That's ex excellent for a mining operation these days. Initial capital cost of 69.9 million. That's very low cost to bring something into production these days. All in sustaining costs of $963 uh, per ounce of gold produced and a life of mine production of 1.245 million ounces of gold. Now, this PEA was based on uh, them shipping their ore to a, an another facility that's owned by the joint venture between Barrick and uh, Newmont. And they have, since they started doing this PEA, they have bought their own uh, processing facility. So once they get their processing, they can use the, the Newmont and Gold Barrick uh, facility uh, for the early production, which is which this PEA is based on, but then they can transition into their own processing facility, which has a, a potential to increase that um, internal rate of return which is already quite exceptional, even looking at it being shipping the material out for processing. So um, this is this Granite Creek project is moving along quite rapidly. 
They only got it a few months ago. They're already at the PEA stage. I think their next uh, <clears throat> next thing they're going to be working on is some um, uh, test mining and uh, more drilling. They've got a lot of drill results to report. Recently, they had some exceptional drill results out that we talked about on past shows with you and Downey. Um, so they've got a heck of a good project, a series of projects, actually. They're already in production. Um, they've got lots of potential to increase their production. Really, when it comes down to it, this company is following the same path to success that Barrick Gold followed in their early days in Nevada, which ultimately propelled them to be one of the main, one of the top top two or three gold mining companies in the world. Nevada is a phenomenal place to mine. The costs are low. Uh, the geology is great. 35, let's say 35% internal rate of return is excellent. Only 70 million to bring it into production. These guys are grow, they have a, a great a uh, group of projects to um, bring them forward as a major producer of gold in Nevada with that Nevada premium. I think that the, in, when, in the future, this company is going to have a billion plus, multiple billion valuation on it, currently has under a half a billion valuation. Um, for those that are looking at getting exposure to gold, what, but want one with a little less risk than pure exploration companies. This is one to look at. They got a great production profile, plus the ability to grow uh, with their drilling. So uh, they take a look at IAU uh, on the Toronto exchange. They also trade as IAUCF on the OTCQX uh, board. Uh, in the United States, and um, uh, I really like the, the prospects or their growth potential going forward. The next company is Predium. Predium um, is not a new name to our audience. I've been following this company since they were $3 a share. Uh, they recent, uh, just a couple of days ago, they got offered by Newcrest to be acquired for $18.50 in cash and, um, and uh, shares. Um, so that's been a great pick uh, from my reports. And um, keep your eyes open. I don't think that this one is finished with the bidding process. They have a tremendously high grade mine. Uh, they have recently been putting out excellent drill results that shows that they can increase the life of their mine. Um, and it's a low cost, high margin mine. And those are in short demand or short supply uh, these days and in strong demand by major mining companies. It's no wonder that Newcrest has put their foot forward. They like these high grade, high margin underground mines. There's others out there in the world uh, that uh, also like these ones. In fact, one that's in Canada is uh, Agnico Eagle. Um, and Agnico Eagle recently uh, has made an offer to buy Kirkland Lake, but I think they have the bandwidth that they could possibly be uh, another bidder for this. And there's other um, companies out there that focus on these underground uh, high-grade operations. And uh, it wouldn't surprise me at all to see a significantly higher uh, bid come in and start somewhat of a bidding war for this because this is a crown jewel. Uh, it's a key asset uh, and uh, it would look good on the balance sheet of a lot of gold mining companies because of its low cost and high margin. PVG is their symbol. And uh, I want to say thank you to them guys for making me look so good on this one. It's up 600% uh, over the years that I've been following it. And I think it could see some more upside. Uh, the next company I wanted to talk about is Newfound Gold. 
Newfound Gold had a news release out a couple days ago that Newfound initiates use of the Chrysler's photo assay method for their Queensway drill, drilling and, into, and into, anticipates reporting first assay results shortly. So they've had some problems of late with their, um, in these high grade systems, when you're, when you're taking a drill core and you're cutting it in half, um, sometimes there can, you can get the, the best half on one side and not so good on the other. And in these high grade nuggety type deposits, what would be more ideal is if they could do the entire core, which would give them a more representative idea. Even though, even that core doesn't give you a real representative number, a lot of times in these high grade systems, uh, when they go into production or bulk sampling, they get a much better idea of the grade because they start pr processing lots of tons of material, which gives them a much better representation of the nuggets that are in those tons of gold. Drilling a hole through a, a ton, you know, you could miss that, just be a half a meter off and miss what is really represented of that whole entire block of a ton. And this photon assay method gives them the ability to do the entire core assaying. And I think that that's gonna be a much better method uh, for this extreme high grade gold system that, well, not just one, but systems that they have found. I think Newfound Gold has the potential to find multiple swan zone type discoveries. That's what is at the Fosterville mine. It's an orogenic uh, discovery uh, mine that Kirkland Lake, I mentioned them earlier, uh, had uh, found this when they, that pro pro project was in production for 20 years. Then they found the swan zone. The swan zone created much lower cost of production much higher margins. It was a real catalyst to drive uh, Kirkland Lake much higher. And uh, these guys are on the Appleton Fault. They've found more than one of these orogenic systems. Um, and I think they've got the potential to find multiple swan zone kind of discoveries. Understanding them, the grade distribution, the uh, the mineralizing system, the complex faulting takes work, but that work is worth it if you've got swan zones. I think these guys can find multiple swan zones. They're not trading much above um, their, uh, their highs uh, or their, here, let me get their chart up. I've got some things I want to show you here with them. Um, let's see, Newfound, uh, let's go over here. We'll go to Newfound, uh, Newfound's chart, and uh, it's NFG is their stock symbol. As you can see over here, they had a high of around $13, let's say. They're, they've had a, about a 50% uh, care cut since that high. They made a low after that high of around $7. Now they've made another low a double bottom. And I think that this one's, especially with gold starting to kick up, this one I think is uh, cheap relative to what they're looking for. And uh, if they find multiple swan zones, this is a company maker that would, if they were a takeout target, they could be valued in the billions. Um, so uh, if you've ever been interested in newfound gold, I think now's the time. Um, the next company that I'm going to uh, talk about is Northwest Copper. Uh, Northwest Copper, they had um, recently, I started covering them again. Um, originally, this was a company called Serengeti. Serengeti merged with another company uh, and um, they, they created Northwest Copper. One of the key assets of um, Serengeti was their Quinica project, 
Now they did some drilling. They were targeting the some more high grade uh, zones inside this overall resource. And on October the 27th, they hit 33% copper over 9.4 meters uh, within a 235 meter interval of 2.92% copper. I'm very bullish on copper. And uh, because of the electrification of, uh, of vehicles and also the potential that the US has to rewire their aging in, uh, power grid. And that will require a lot of copper in order to bring the power to the electrical vehicles. And there's not a lot of great, um, great uh, copper projects out there. This one, what, what always excited me about the Quinica project is they also had a big anomaly at depth. And they never really drilled into that anomaly. Now they're getting closer and closer to that anomaly and they're hitting this super high grade material. And they're talking about structures in there that were unknown before. That's the kind of stuff that could lead them to something even bigger than what they already have close to surface at depth. If it has these kind of numbers in it, well, they're off to the races. Then they also, on November 8th, they announced that their uh, East Nib project returned a little over half a gram of copper equivalent, over 81 meters, and included in that was 1% copper equivalent over 14.8 meters. This caused a lot of attention, and they got a, uh, just yesterday, they announced that Northwest Copper announces a $20 billion, or $20 million, sorry, $20 million bought deal private placement. Uh, and uh, they're going to issue 17 million shares uh, at $1.18 per share. So right now the stock is trading at, um, let's see here, I'll bring it up if I can. The uh, stock um, is trading at North Northwest Copper right now. Let me get it up here is 87 cents today. So that's quite a significant uh, a discount from that, um, that uh, financing. And they only have $110 million valuation. So they're about to put a big chunk of that, uh, their valuation in cash with this bought deal financing. As you can see in the stock chart here, <coughs> excuse me, that's uh, when they announced that big hole with that 33% copper, it popped up here like this. Now it's kind of been going sideways. They've got more drill results to report. So stay tuned. I think you're gonna see some more good news out of, um, out of uh, our friends at um, Northwest Copper. Again, I've been following this project for years. I understand the mineral, uh, the, uh, the resource and the depth potential. Now they looks like they've got another uh, structurally controlled uh, mineralization inside that resource that could lead them to much higher grades at depth. So uh, if you're bullish on uh, copper like I am, NWST is another one to look at. The next company I wanted to talk about is uh, Canstar Resources. Last week, CanStar announced additional shallow high-grade gold drill results from their Golden Bay project in Newfoundland. Um, they hit, here's just, I'll run down some of the higher-grade stuff, 2.9 meters, 13.4 grams per ton. Included in that was one meter of 31 grams per ton. Another down, uh, another hole had 0.95 meters, of 13.89 grams per ton. They, they uh, Rod, Rob Br Brueggemann, Brueggemann, who's the president and CEO of CanStar stated, and I quote, the early drill results from the Kendall Prospe Prospect are very encouraging. We're getting high grade gold intercepts in most of these drill holes. These types of orogenic gold deposits tend to be structurally complex and the continuity of mineralization from hole to hole is excellent. 
because it allows us to follow the, the mineralized system. The shallow dip of the gold mineralization is also a positive as it will enable us to use shorter, less expensive drill holes in the future drill programs to follow the gold mineralization to depth and a long strike. As has been seen at other orogenic gold deposits, gold mineralization can extend significantly at depths and widths and grades, can improve if the right conditions existed during the mineralizing events. We see the, uh, the great potential for additional gold discovery at the Kendall Prospect and surrounding area, uh, end quote. Here you can see a, uh, a plan view of their uh, drilling uh, and uh, where they hit the, uh, the nice drill holes. Um, and um, here's a cross section. As you can see, it's starting to have a, a pretty interesting series of hits right above that graphitic black shale. Um, and that they can, they can follow that graphitic black shale and shear zone down deeper. And that's likely part of the, the, the rock preparation that led to this mineralization. So it looks like they've got a good marker in that graphitic black shale. They've got the good mineralization just above it. They think that it's open uh, uh, to closer to surface and at depth. Um, this one has a valuation. Uh, rocks is their symbol. I like that symbol, R-O-X. Uh, rocks, they have 90 million shares out, a $25 million valuation. And the stock has just been basically bottoming as they're getting these really good drill results. Um, to me, I think that this is the kind of uh, company and kind of project that could get a lot of attention. It wouldn't surprise me if this is the bottoming phase of a cup forming trend. Uh, and the next direction is to uh, get up the right side of that cup and move into some higher yearly, new yearly highs. Uh, I'm going to try to reach out to this company and uh, get an interview with them uh, because I like what they're doing and uh, I think that they they could uh, hit some really good stuff <clears throat> and uh, I want to know more about the company so I'll reach out to them try to get an interview with them. Okay the final company today is Candente Copper. For those that have been following my reports for the last decade plus I used to talk about Candente Copper a lot, a lot because they have a very big resource of copper uh, in, uh, down in South America. But sometimes when you have these big copper projects, the development costs are also very high. And in the last cycle when copper was going towards $5 a pound, they had a lot of attention. After it rolled over and has been on the downside for the last few years, uh, several years, they didn't have a lot of attention for, you know, something that would cost a billion or more to bring into production. But recently when copper started uh, performing very well and looking like it's on its way to over $5 again, I got in contact with uh, Joey Freeze, the person who runs this company. And I asked her, Joey, your phone must be starting to ring more. You, not a lot of big resources out there of copper. And uh, she said, yeah, the, there's been a lot more interest. And, um, and she said that they're working on some new plans um, to look at the potential to um, bring this, uh, start with something smaller and grow it from there. The smaller idea would mean that they wouldn't need one of these billion dollar plus uh, development uh, projects and uh, they could bring it into production for a lot cheaper. And as copper goes higher, this is the kind of thing that a lot of more investors are gonna start paying attention to 
Let me uh, just get up uh, DNT. DNT is their stock symbol. And um, let's see here, there we are. As you can see, uh, it had a bottom. Now it's creating a cup formation and starting to go up the right side of that cup. And uh, I think that, you know, they could start seeing some higher highs here, higher 52 week highs in the not too distant future. They only have a $47 million valuation and uh, relative to all the copper that they have, they have billions of dollars worth of copper. So they're trading at a small fraction of the, the value of what's in the ground there, no matter what metric you, you base your assessment on. And um, so I think that for those that are interested in copper like I am, and one of the key reasons that I'm so interested in copper is I know that there's not a lot of big uh, copper deposits or copper discoveries or even copper exploration that's going on right now. And the world is needing a lot more copper. And um, I think that that move in copper is going to help out Candente with the investors in general, plus the institutional investors that could fund bringing something like this into production. So um, take a look at DNT and do your homework on that one as well. So there you go, folks. That's some companies I've been watching their news on lately, and I really like what I see uh, from these various companies. As always, my shows are for information purposes only. It's important for you to do your homework, speak with your financial advisors. I always stress how important it is for you to do your own homework. And especially now, gold is starting to move. Copper's performing very well. Silver's starting to move. I'm very bullish on all of those things. I'm also very bullish on batteries and battery technology. And uh, I think there's a lot of good things coming out of those kind of mining companies. And uh, I've been trying over my shows over the last several months to put together a good group of companies for you to do your homework on. I think of it somewhat as a shopping list. Uh, and uh, a lot of these companies still have very cheap valuations relative to their assets. And with a more buoyant market for gold, silver, copper, and battery uh, metals and technology, um, this is something you want to pay attention to as an investor, because I think better days are ahead. Those better days are probably a lot closer than most think. And um, that's a good time to be finding bargains on your shopping list. On that note, have a great day and we will talk to you soon.